Hey guys, so today I thought that I would talk to you guys about how to really annotate your GCSE art so that you get the best grade possible basically. My other GCSE art video got so much like love. People were saying it was really useful which was so great to hear because I know that GCSE art is so much harder than you first think and that people think in general. You know, people would come up to me and be like, it's not that hard. I was like, this is the hardest GCSE I've ever taken. Like, why does it take so much time? And one of the main things that I think a lot of people find hard is annotating pieces of art because essentially you probably just chose it because you like it, not because there's a deeper meaning or stuff like this. Since I made that video, I have been getting so many DMs of people just asking questions about artist research, how to write certain things. Should I annotate this? Should I do this? Should I not do that? You said do this, but do you actually mean do this? My Instagram is at Maisie underscore Crompton, spelt the same way as my YouTube. When I say I get a lot of people DM me, I mean, since I posted that video, I've definitely answered over like 70 DMs. Usually, and every single one, I like tweak what I say and stuff like that. But I thought it'd be a good idea to tell you all my tips and tricks of annotating, just keeping it real. It's not going to be like anything crazy it's literally just how you do it if you want to do it to the books basically i thought i would read the dms that people send to me i'm not i don't think i'll include them in here because i haven't asked if they want to be included so i feel kind of bad without further ado i'm gonna read the messages that people have sent to me and then i'm gonna basically tell you my reply instead of do you know what i mean where I've sent the reply, I'm just going to tell you what I've replied. I'm going to be looking down here because I need to read what people have sent. So the first thing is, I have some tonal studies and different colour studies in different mediums. Is it important that we write about what we do for each section? They were basically saying that they'd done some experiments before doing a painting and they were asking do they need to write about it i would say yes if you want to get a high grade write about your experiments and for annotating experiments these are the key things you need to mention i would usually say the media that i used and how i used it first of all so for example i used biro and i decided that i would use a lot of pressure because then I thought it would make it more detailed or something like that or charcoal because I thought that it would give me a deeper tone and the shadows would be more obvious something like that basically say why you decided to use that media then you need to say the strengths and weaknesses so say what went well and what didn't go so well so for example you could say um I managed to get the detail in this experiment however it doesn't have the colour that I want and I think if I had colour it would make it stand out more something like that honestly if you don't have anything to say make it up half of my book is made up annotations I was like mm. I would even do experiments that I knew that I wouldn't like because then I could say I will I'm not going to use this for my final piece because blah 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 because I can't get the detail or because it smudges when my hand goes there something like that so I would just say I'm not going to use this for my final piece because and then leave it there and I would do that for every single annotation so quick ideas for experiments I would say um colored pencil normal like black and white pencil charcoal uh what else could you do you could do you could do pen where you put water over it watercolor oil pastel oil paint acrylic um for one of mine i would get like a bit of string and paint it and then put it on uh what else did i do like i would do like really random things because i was starting to run out of ideas in my books then i got asked should i annotate my paintings or observational drawings that i've done so typically in a book you won't see that often that they've been annotated but i would recommend annotating like literally everything you can and make it so obvious like if you did it if it's a copy of an artist's work like etc etc annotating paintings slash observational drawings that i've done i would say the method that i used to do it and then i would link it back to an artist that i'd looked at and how 
my drawing or my painting was inspired by that artist and how I've improved since looking at that artist. Again, I would explain why I did it, what went well, what I'd change in the future and how this has impacted ideas for my final piece. Even if you just say, I, I now know that I don't want to do this for my final piece or I now know that I want to look more into that area for my final piece. Somebody said, hi, I'm doing art GCC, just wondered if it matters that I haven't put any writing on my artwork. And then I basically just said that it's good to make it clear if it's your work, if it's your work but you copied the artist's work, or if it's your work and it's inspired by an artist, or it's completely thought up by you. Just so the examiner can see the process, Somebody asked me what I write when I do still life drawings, which I think is quite a narrow niche actually when annotating because not a lot of people do still life drawings in their book. But if you do, I would just do the same thing that I do for experiments. So say why I chose to do it, what went well, what didn't go so well and how it's going to impact my work in the future. Now onto artist research. When I say a lot of people wanted to know how to do an artist research, I was like I was a bit shocked because for me my teachers laid out a plan like this is how you do artist research if you want to get the best grades but I don't know what some people's teachers are doing because people just don't know what to write or at least that's what it's coming across like which I kind of get like if you haven't been taught how to do an artist research then I'd be asking as well first rule for an artist research do not write anything about their personal life if it does not impact their art if something happened in their life that impacted their art then include it but if it's just they were born here um and they did this and then they did this we don't want a biography of them as a person we just want to know about their art and how that's going to impact your decisions and your thought process so basically i would have headings for each thing i was talking about so that when an examiner is looking through the book they don't have to read everything they can see that i've written about composition um line texture etc etc because i've clearly headed line texture in bold first thing i would do is just talk about what does their work look like you can either talk about it as a collection of what their work looks like but sometimes that can be quite hard because artists can do like different styles and stuff like that so if you don't want to talk about their work as a collection talk about one piece and do it in detail then you want to talk about why you are researching them so basically just say that you thought you'd research this person because you'd been inspired by something previously and you think it's going to impact your work like this then you want to write what influenced the artist to paint or the artist to do these kind of drawings. So just doing a bit of research, maybe find an interview or something like that of your artist and find out what inspired them, who they were inspired by, why they do the work that they do, because that can really help you with your own work. Um, essentially, artist research is actually meant to help you with your own work. So I would argue sometimes it doesn't, but that's what it's there to do then you want to talk about the basic elements for every single artist research i would have a like basic elements section you want to include i'm just going to read it off because i'm not going to be able to remember them um color pattern texture line composition mood tone and form if you don't know what each of them are then i would recommend just googling them and you can find words i think there's like this website that gives you words that you can like talk about for your art for a quick example for color i would say the colors in this piece are really harmonious they're warm colors or cool colors or i would say the colors in this piece contrast and they like clash and explain what impact that has you basically just want to explain how that impacts the art you basically need to chat absolute rubbish even if you don't believe it and you will be fine then do a section on the ideas it's given for your project slash theme so you just say this has inspired me to carry on painting or this has inspired me to try a different media which i'm gonna do in my next few pages or something like that and you're basically just saying that you're working towards getting the best final piece you can and you want to talk about the media slash technique that they've used so have they used um so for acrylic paint have they made it smooth has it got a texture to it have they used the lino technique for something about how they've done the work 
did they, I don't know, do their outlines in yellow paint instead of tonal pencil, you know, just things like that. So then you want to include the title, my response, which is basically your opinion on the work. On this bit, you can just go full out because it's your opinion. You don't need any facts. You just need to interpret the work. I would try and like find a deeper meaning of what you think of the work. So when I say I could find a meaning behind any piece of art, it was like my main skill. I drew a Marmite jar with absolutely no meaning at all. And I managed to say this has a meaning because um, people either love or hate Marmite and it's like showing the divisions and stuff like this. Like obviously I don't believe that. It's a Marmite jar, but you just have to go along with it. And I would talk about the meaning behind the artist's work. So usually they'll tell you the meaning behind their work. So, and if, and if they don't really just make it up, just, just make it up. You can make up the meaning of anything. Maybe ask your mum. Say, mum, what's the meaning of this? What do you think the meaning of this is? If you were gonna be, if you were gonna be really like abstract, what do you think the meaning of this is? And just ask a few people and then write it down. Then to finish it off, I would do a mini transcription, which is basically where you take a section of their work or a piece of their work and you replicate it and try and use the same media that they have. For the bit where I'm talking about my artist research, I quickly thought that I would pop in, just <laughs> pop in as if I'm coming in something. I quickly thought that I would just show you what I mean by like putting a heading and then writing. And I did Shepherd Fairy for one of my artists. When I talk about putting headings in your artist research, this is what I mean. Here you'll see that I've just, here I've said I've decided to research Shepherd Fairy because and then I've said meaning here and then written about the meaning. This is still the meaning. I had a lot of meaning to write. Um, and then on this side, this is my mini transcription. Then on this side, it says tone, line, colour, media slash technique and personal response, which personal response down here, which is basically your opinion of the work. This isn't an artist's research, but it is when I edited my own pictures the same way that he does. So I did it like this. Um, and again, I still put headings. But it's another artist research that I have. Um, so on this side, this bit up here just says my personal response. This says media slash technique texture. Um, and then on this side, it says meaning, um, composition, tone, color. Somebody has said, Hey, I just found your art sketchbook video on YouTube and wondered whether you could help me. I'm really unsure on what I need to cover and how to lay out my pages to do well. If you could help, it would be appreciated so much because it's stressing me out quite a lot. Thanks. I just replied to this girl saying, for backgrounds, just do a quick background that's related to the work that you're studying. So for example, if you're doing an artist that paints a lot in watercolour, just do a quick wash of paint for the background in watercolour on your page or if somebody has a lot of black and white drawings and stuff like that then just grab some acrylic paint get some black and white and use a palette knife and just scrape it along the background honestly anything but white makes it look a lot better and a lot nicer then I basically just said for artist research split it into sections so have your heading for each section so I've already sort of gone through this then I would usually type my annotations just because it's so much clearer for people to see and I think it looks nicer for most people. Some people do have really nice handwriting but the problem with that is that are you not going to go wrong? Because I remember when I was typing out my artist research I'd always go back and add in things and you can't really do that if you're handwriting. I would usually type it up, print it out at school and then back it up with like black um, card for the background. And then I just said where annotations couldn't fit in or I've forgotten to annotate some things, then I would just add a piece of card on some string into the ring like binder thing. Hope you don't mind me dropping a DM. I just subbed to your YouTube as I found your art sketchbook videos, which are insane. Thank you. Um, I'm in year 10 at the moment and doing fine art GCC, which is the same one that I did for anybody wondering, which I'm struggling with so much. Ah, <laughs> I love it. Like how people just type how they talk i just don't have a clue in how to write about artists i study and then like uh 
I don't know how to do that face. <laughs> also hate my teacher. As the artist, she gets us to study. I just really not my style. I had a meltdown today and I'm so stressed. And I hate that art has been ruined for me. Would love any advice. I need inspo. I doubt you'll read this. Ah ha ha. And then that face, it's like, girl, there are so many people messaging me like this. They're like, I hate my art teacher. My art teacher's crap. I'm like, who are people employing these days? Basically saying that she can't find artists to study and the ones that her teacher finds she doesn't like. My top tips for finding artists to study is to look on Pinterest, search up things that you are interested in or look at artists that you've already studied, then scroll down and you'll see related artists to that. Click on the picture and then find what artist it is and then see if you can find enough information to do an artist research about them. I would just say try and find artists that link to your theme because that's obviously gonna make your book look as cohesive as it can. If your teacher does ask why you picked that, just be able to explain that it links to your theme and you really like it and this is how it's going to help you. I'm sure your teachers will understand. They obviously have limited knowledge on artists because they don't know everybody and everybody has different um, like projects and themes. So they can't know every single artist for you to research. They should try and help. At the end of the day, do it yourself. Like I'm sitting here telling you all of this and I have not been to like an art teacher training day. At this point, I'm gonna set up my own online art school. So that's basically the DMs summed up. I basically found people's DMs that like, because I would get like 50 DMs about artist research and then like 15 DMs about uh, how to find an artist or something. So that's basically it summed up. That is me answering like the dms that i get a lot telling you simply how to annotate your artwork to get a good grade i got a grade nine in one of my books and then in another of my books got a grade eight i do hope you enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe or comment down below if you've got any questions or anything like that if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and i will see you all soon